Praise God. Well, look at your neighbor and tell them that somewhere in the future, they're going to mu look much better than they do right now. Tell them, take a look at them, tell them that somewhere in the future, they're going to look much better than they do right now. There's hope for everybody. There's hope for everybody. There's hope because somewhere in the future, you're going to look much better than you do right now. Hallelujah. Now, you look good now, but somewhere in the future, you're going to look much better. Amen. Hey, you know what? I got one word. Sammy's going to be praying for people. I'm going to, I have a word for you. What's your name? Who? Joshua. How many think that's a good name? Joshua. How old are you, Joshua? Six. Six years old. How many think it's good, it's good to give a word to a six-year-old? Lord, I thank you for Joshua. I'm going to, God is speaking to me. So, Joshua, you're a David. I see it all around you. You're a David. And you love God like David. You've got a big heart. You think about other people. You love your parents. That's always a good thing. But you know what? There's the anointing of David is around you. That's right. The anointing of David. And as you grow up, you're not going to care what other people think about you. You're going to worship God, talk about God, prophesy, do all this stuff. Because that prophetic anointing is going to be on you since you're a child, since you're aging up. He doesn't think he's very young now. He, six is pretty old for him. But I'm going to tell you something. Children, unless you become like a little child, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Children can receive much or more at this age. And I'll tell you why. I have a guy working for me. He works for Sammy, too. He's one of the best uh, um, web guys in Canada, as far as I'm concerned, Dalen Clark. And he was up to our last conference, I think. Yeah, last conference for a day. And uh, he's working for us. He started working for my wife's foundation. She has two foundations. And so we're, we've known him for a couple of years. And finally he came up to me. He goes, you don't remember me, do you? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, you work, you're working for us the last couple of years. No, no, no. You don't remember when I was nine. I said, no. He said, uh, where are you from? Grand Cash. I said, I went to Grand Cash. He said, you prophesied over me when I was nine years old. And the prophetic word was when he was nine years old that he was going to start businesses very, very young. And by the time he was 18, he'd have a number of businesses. He started his first business. He was 12. At 18, he had a bunch of businesses, and now he's got a bunch more businesses, and he works for us. Go figure. So you might be working for us in a few years. Hallelujah. That's the word. How many know that God is good? Okay. Um, I brought a USB. I was going to, you know what? I was in a meeting for 20 minutes. I drank from my microphone and spoke into my mic. I was that inebriated. I was... For 20 minutes, the glory of God came at me in Mackenzie. I was, the glory of God just hit. Everybody fell out. Everybody fell out. And it was pews. It was a church with pews. It was the United Presbyterian Anglican Church, the three in one. And the minister had a collar, and the power of God hit. And he, the only person who didn't fall down was me. And the, and the ministry went, and he got lodged up against the wall. Everyone fell out. And I was like, I drank from my microphone for 20 minutes and didn't even know it. The glory of God was so strong. I had my eyes closed and fine. The only way I knew what I was doing I went like this and went, man, the water's dry in this part of the world. So I did it again, so it's happening. We have USBs, it's got 14. Um, this is like the Library of Charlie. You've heard of the Library of Congress? This is like the Library of Charlie. It's got 14 full, like, hour and a half messages, <clears throat> which is short for me. And um, these will rock your life. They're testimonies, many, uh, many, many testimonies of the glory of God in everyday life. Most of them are not what happened in church. Most of them are what happens at work when you carry the glory. Because I worked in the school for years. I worked in different places for years. And, and, and it's amazing when you embrace God, he goes everywhere with you. And so, so get these. We've got a bunch of these. Also, I've, I've talked about them before. We only have a few left. Jedediah's uh, CD on the gospel of total prosperity. Isn't that good? You guys have, I mean, Jedediah's amazing. He's coming out in, in June. Don't miss it. If you're a business person, you can sign up, get a card. Uh, we got cards like this. It says Kingdom Wealth Summit, and it's going to be limited. It'll, whenever it's full, it's closed. It's 200 and some people. That's it. In beautiful Bromont, Quebec. He's coming out, and it will be the, every single person went to Whistler 
uh, 10 years ago with us. Every single person that went there was about 250 people. So it was the best conference they've ever been to in their life, including me. Stacy was there. Wesley was there. Jed and I was there. It was absolutely amazing. We're doing another one. If something happens when you come in the presence of God, a lot of uh, people from around the world are coming out. If you want to meet people in business, not meet, not so you can get their business card, you want to see how people work in other nations through wealth in the kingdom. It's not about their money. And most of the billionaires I know, because I know seven in Indonesia, one in, in, uh, in Malaysia, they all call themselves intercessors with a billion dollars each. U.S. They fast, they pray, they love God, they use their money for the kingdom. We need to learn that in Canada because a lot of Christians are afraid when you talk about money. Some leave their wallets at home just in case. Okay. Um, uh, just a few things. I'm going to tell you some of the things on, on my USB that are on. My name's Charlie, by the way, in case you didn't know who Charlie. I'm Sammy's dad. so He used to be my son. Now I'm his dad. So that's how it works. Uh, we've got, these are the messages. Acceleration. You know when we're in the season of acceleration? Most people, though, have the turtle spirit. Many people I meet, many churches, turtle spirit, they do. I learned that from Jedediah. He just comes in, turtle spirit. One step forward, two steps back. Many Christians in Ontario, they're afflicted by it. They don't even know it. They go one step forward, something happens, two steps back. And then they work and work and work, and they're like, not even are they not where they were, they're here. But you see, you listen to these series, you find out how to accelerate instead of decelerate. You find out how to go forward Instead of it, you'll go forward and back up and forward and back up, and all of a sudden you're over here, and what happened over there? I was at a church in Ontario, I won't say the name. I was doing revival meetings, so I was driving to the first meeting, the first church in Ontario. Jed and I lives in Singapore. I'm driving, God says, tell the pastor he's got a turtle spirit in his church. I'm like, I don't want to tell him that. Hi, pastor, you got a turtle spirit in your church. So I told him, what's that? One step forward, two steps back. The moment I said it, went around the corner, here was a great big billboard of a big sea turtle. And his church had to do with water, but I won't tell you the name, just so you don't know who it is. Not in this town, but not far away. And um, just protect the innocent, right? And um, I'm in the meeting. The glory of God falls. The front row is full of, you know, the who's who in the Toronto Zoo. is awesome. Or in the area. And they're all, we're on the, I'm just about on the floor, but I got to preach, so. <clears throat> and I see this Korean guy at the back, and I recognize him. Oh, no, pardon me, Taiwan, and he's going like this with the phone. And, he's, and I'm like, what are you doing? I felt like calling the usher. He's, you know, he's got the phone, and he keeps coming halfway up. And I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, Jedediah, Jedediah. I said, what if, Je what Jedediah? Watch online. He's watching online. I said, Jedediah Tam from Singapore, like the guy that, he says, he has a message for you. So he has a, he texted this guy. He says, tell Charlie Robinson that the pastor has a turtle spirit in his church. Can anybody relate to that? If you can't relate to going one step forward and, and two steps back, because if you, stop, if you stop that, you'll be in revival. When revival comes, you don't go back. You go forward. Many of you have worked and worked and worked and worked and worked and worked. This is the way. In fact, these meetings will help you with that. It'll help you to develop grit. You've got to have grit to go through the things that you're going to have to go through to get to where you want to go. Because the devil doesn't want you to have revival, but it doesn't matter. You've got to be like my wife. She puts the pressure on the devil. The devil doesn't put pressure on her. She learned how to do it. You are not called to have the devil put pressure on you every day. That's a lie from the devil. Well, we're going to have the pressure. No, it's not. Jesus said you will trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the devil, and nothing shall by any means hurt me. So then you got to figure out how that works. This is how it works. This is really, all these things we're talking about is a part of revival. It's going forward instead of going back or sitting in idle. It's moving forward whether you feel like it or not, you get the finances or not. I mean, these conferences, they cost a lot of money, but he's going to do it anyway, whether he's got to, I mean, a lot of money. They're, the average of these conferences are twenty to $25,000 because as yet, we haven't been able to translate in the spirit, so we still have to take a plane. So we fly everybody in, fly them out, we receive offerings, but we just believe God. Money is the last thing we're thinking of, but we, I have to take offerings because God keeps giving me dreams. Receive offerings. You've got to do it. You're a priest. Receive offerings. On behalf of who? God. Can you imagine that? I have a good calling. Not only I get to do that, I get to meet the best people in the world. You know who the best people in the world in my books are? People hungry for God, and there's a whack of you in here. You're hungry for God. I can feel it. I can hear it. And you can ask my son, I don't say that everywhere. Okay, really quickly. Acceleration from God's point of view. Pursuing joy in your marriage. Pursuing joy. 
three people. Praise God. Oh, pursuing joy in your marriage. I've been married for 37 years, going on 38 years. We, from day one, joy, joy, joy. I tell people how to speak behind your wife's back. How to speak well behind your wife's back. How to speak good things when she's not around. I do it all the time. I do, we do it with Sammy. We speak good behind people's back. I mean, some people say, I got your back. It means I'm going to stab your back. I mean, some people, you just, right? No, I got your back. How do you get somebody's back? You speak well of them. And if somebody else comes in and speaks evil, you let them have it with a bunch of good words about the people they're speaking evil of. And that's the way it goes all the time, every day, 100% of the time. That's what you do. And by your words, you'll be justified. And by your words, you'll be condemned. Life and death are not in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. You use life for your brothers. Isn't that good? Okay. So, Sammy, this afternoon, t t um, tonight, Bill Pranker. Don't want to miss Bill Pranker. Amazing. And... Um, Tomorrow morning, very important, Saturday morning, we are having a, we're calling it the Partner for Canada free breakfast. Some of you thought it was money, so it cost you, so you didn't sign up, but it's a free breakfast. So if you signed up, guess what? You get it for free. You got to sign up quick because we already have, yeah, we have already 60 people of a group like this is really, really good that have signed up. And it's going to be amazing because Bill's going to be there, Sammy's going to be there, I'm going to be there, and we're going to lay hands on every single person for an anointing of the glory of God and revival. This is after. And Bill's going to speak. I'm going to share a little bit about 1986. But anyway, and then <clears throat> different than what I preached on. And, uh, and so, so if you want to, after this service, sign up. And then once, once it's full, I guess it's full. And then Sammy might have to fast if there's too many people. Sorry, Sammy. I just volunteered you. Okay, good. We got everything? Um, yeah, good. We got everything. So I, I'm going to talk a bit about a purpose-driven, uh, you've heard of purpose-driven church, purpose-driven giving. And it doesn't happen to me all the time, but sometimes it happens to me. And so I've learned that when I preach, you know, the Bible says this, Apollos sowed, I watered, Paul said, but God gives the increase. Then God says this, it's amazing. So then, he that sows and waters is nothing, old King James, but God that gives the increase. God said that to me after I received one of the biggest offerings ever received at Sammy's meeting. It was amazing. And all of a sudden, I'm like, wow, how did I do that? God says, forget it. It's not how it works. It's not how you did it. Some sow, some water, but I give the increase. So then, listen, so then, he that sows and waters is nothing, but God gives the increase. In other words, the farmer takes the seed. He plants it in the ground. The Bible says, King James, how it works, he does not know. He doesn't know how it works. He just knows that when he sows, he's going to reap in, in like four months or whatever. He sows, and he's going to reap a harvest. So when you sow, you got to know you're going to, you're going to reap a harvest. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. In the spirit, I can tell you right now, none of us know how it works. We have some concepts, but we don't either. Just like the farmer. You know, you know what the seed has to do? Die. Wait a minute. Die? This, you, know what, you know in giving? I'm going to tell you because God, you know, when, when you give till it hurts, it's like, some, it's like you give the money away and you're like, oh, it's out of your hands. That's how it dies. That's what giving is. Giving is giving something to somebody or a ministry or, or somebody either to help them or you sowing into revival. But when it leaves your hand, it dies as far as you're concerned. You've got no more control. And that's the whole point. It's the same as a seed. If it doesn't go in the ground, Jesus said, it will abide alone. Many of you right now, you're looking for help. You're looking for financial help. You're praying for financial help. I'm going to tell you something. Some of you are alone. Because it's, the, it's, the, it's what you've sowed in the ground is what you get your harvest from, not what you keep in the barn. And so when we learn that to the degree when we learn it, the glory of God will fall. And I have found, just like in, in Solomon, when they sacrifice and sacrifice and sacrifice thousands of bulls and sheep and thousands and thousands, and, and it came before the Lord, then the appropriate glory fell, like it never fell in the whole Old Testament. So that nobody could stand up, not even the worshipers. That's not my message, but that's, th this is what God wants us to do today. To, yes, it is my message. God wants us to do to, to sow the appropriate amount. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you about a recent test. I like Old Testament. How about recent testimonies? So a few months ago, I get a text from uh, Andrew, who's the worship leader. You should check out Elisha Revolution because they're in a 780, 90, 800 day. You're going to be there in a couple of weeks in San Diego. I'm going to be there too the week after. And he was, Jeremy was one of our interns. Can you imagine having an intern? 
who's moving in that, Jeremy Nelson, travels all over the world, miracle signs and wonders, just a great kid. His wife is a model, not a supermodel, but right next to it. Witnesses, she, this girl, wit, she, we've known her since she's a teenager. She considers us, uh, 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 she considers me a, a spiritual father. But this girl witnesses to all the, all, of, all, all the models, all the time, all the time, prays for the sick, all except for one uh, clothing producer in the world. She goes to the Paris Fall Collection. She goes to uh, Milan. She goes to London. She goes to all of them. You know what she does? She models. She has a certain standard. All the guys know she won't wear anything risque, nothing. But they line up. She's been in every, I mean, how many, somebody caught, what's his name, buying a, what was that? Not L. What was that magazine he was buying? Like about 12 women's magazines. Um, name of women's magazine that's big. Vogue. And the lady goes, you must like Vogue. He goes, no, this is for all my relatives. My wife's in there. What's that? Oh, you were with him? I was holding house. Oh, man. Well, okay, Sammy, no. Okay. Why am I saying that? Because we go down there. These guys are witnessing machines. They witness everybody. They pray for everybody. They, they pray for the sake all the time. They witness everybody, no matter where they are. Isn't that awesome? They, you know? And so, so why am I saying that? Because his worship leader phoned me up. Uh, pardon me, texted me uh, several months ago and said, uh, there's a church in San Diego. They're in full-blown revival. They've been in revival for a year. <clears throat> And they want their father, they want the father of their revival to come. And they said, would you be willing to come? I said, yeah, I'll come. I said, uh, I'll come. And I never heard of the church, Spanish-speaking church, full-blown revival. And they said, uh, they want the father. And I said, well, who's the father of revival? Because I thought the father of their revival, I'm me. They said, no, you're the father of their revival. I said, who? Yeah, you, Charlie Robinson. I said, different Charlie Robinson. I, I've, never, I've never been there. Half Moon Bay, half an hour outside of San Francisco. No, no, you're the father of their revival. I'm the father of their, can you, I'm the father, like, I'm like, I'm not the father. Wrong Charlie Robbins, another Charlie Robbins. No, no, you're the guy. And they said they came and heard you, and then revival broke up the next day. So, so I'm thinking about, hey, I'm the father of revival. I didn't even know I had. It's like meeting a baby you never know you had, right? So, no, it's not. But in the spirit it is. In the spirit. It's a good thing. So all of a sudden, I'm, I'm, I go down there with my wife, Half Moon Bay, uh, pastor picks us up, gives us a van. So we don't go to the church. He go, on the way to the hotel, he tells us what happened. He said, well, about, um, so his revival happened about a year and a few months ago, because you were just there a few months. So, so at that time, he had a dream. And he had a dream about the river of life being uncapped from the earth. It was like there was rivers, and all of a sudden God uncapped them, and it went all over the world. And, and God told him it was all about the river that was going to flow. And he taught him how to drink. He had 40 dreams in a row. 40 consecutive nights, 40 dreams, about the only way to access the river of life and the coming move of God was to take a barrel and take a drink by faith. God taught him the secret of the river, that if you become like a little child, if you, you can enter in. But if you don't, you can't. How do you become like a little child? You eat, drink, and play, because little children like to do three things more than anything else. Eat, drink, and play, especially play. And we learn how to play, and we learn how to drink by faith. I mean, you know what? Little children do a lot of things. Like, they'll toast the queen at a tea party. They're not, she's not even there. They don't even have tea. They don't even have a cup. They don't even have a table. They're pretending they're toasting the queen. Of it. But that's how it works. Now, God is really there, so we're not toasting somebody who's not there. And so anyway, uh, he was telling me what happened. He said, well, I had these 40, 40 nights. God showed me the river. So I was drinking, drinking. I went around, told all my assemblies of God, preach, preacher friends, here's how, here's how revival's coming. Every single one of them shut me down. I lost all my friends. I have no pastor friends in this area. Spanish pastor friends, he's Spanish. They all thought it was crazy. I was drinking from the river and shut them down. And he said, but I kept drinking, but revival didn't come. You see, there's not just one thing you do for revival. There's several things you got to do. It's not just one key. It's more like a combination lock of several things you got to do. See, many people get one key, they think that's it, and they don't see it two steps back. Because you only open up one. What happened? God wants to give you the combination. He wants to give you the full. Here's what Paul said. I know that when I come unto you, I will come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Not just the blessing of the gospel. The fullness of the blessing. And so, he lets us off at the hotel. And, uh, but then he tells me, before we got there, he says, but I, I found you on YouTube. He said, I was looking, who drinks, who drinks, who drinks from the river? I found this guy, drink from the river. 
That's my dreams. 40 nights of dreams like that. That's the key is the river. When you drink from the river, because the river proceeds from the throne of God, Revelation 22, verse 1. What is the throne of God? It's the government of God. Do you know that it's not the government, it's the government of the church that's in the church. It's the government of God that's in the church. The government of God is in the church. Ottawa has a natural government, but the government of God is in the church. This guy's got government on him. I, every time I look at him, government. But you see, the government of God, what flows out of the government of God? What flows out of the throne? The river. The river. The river. Could anything could flow out, but the river flows out. Clear as crystal. That's why I, I tell you, every time I walked in there, I saw crystal clear water. I thought, oh, there's crystal clear, clear water. I told him last night again, you, you guys, clear water in your church. That's, that's because the government, out of the government of God flows the river. Very, very interesting. You want to see in the spirit? Drink more of the crystal clear water of the river. Taste and see. Taste and see that the Lord is good. That's the order. Taste, see. He said, we found you. We heard you were going to be in San Diego. So we came to San Diego. But you didn't preach that night. We only had one night, Thursday night. And uh, who was preaching the other fellow, Sammy, the, uh, uh, the fiddle player? Georgian Banoff. I don't know if you've heard of him. Georgian Banoff. We were doing a conference on extreme joy. Oh, what a conference. That guy can preach on joy. And I can preach a little bit on joy. But I'm, you know, but so I, I, but I wasn't preaching. So they were disappointed. They hadn't heard of him. They heard of me. And so I received the offering. And I said this. He said, you said these words. I, just what I was saying now, I said, we're going we're gonna to receive an offering for revival now, not down the road. This isn't a revival one day in the by and by. We're so in up ahead. But I said, right now, I want you to put your faith up right now. When you put your money into the basket or whatever, I says, you're going to believe for revival right now. The moment I said that, he said, God, this, God said to him, this is your last key. You've been faithful at drinking, going to the river, hit all this gosh, God showed him. But the one thing he didn't have was the key of giving. He said, I gave everything I had. I emptied out their church was a handful of people. So he gave everything he had in the account, told his elder to give everything he had. And his daughter said, she was 16 at the time, she told me, she said, I want to pray in tongues so bad. I had so many people pray for me, I could never pray in tongues. I said, God, I want to be filled with the Spirit. I want revival. She gave everything they had. So they literally gave everything they had, the four or five of them, in their little tiny home group church. They gave everything that night. Then, and then, she was then she told me, we came, and then we came home that night. We met together. We prayed in the morning. The glory of God came. First thing happened, she started speaking in tongues, and the glory came, hit their church. She said, we've been in revival for a year. So we're at the hotel. We're going to be at the, at the, uh, in the next afternoon at their church. So they gave me the address. I'm driving down the freeway, and I look. I'm trying to find the address because the, the buildings are so far away. And I look, and there's a Lutheran church. And the cars are parked from one end to the other, right beside the freeway, on both sides of the road, blocking the road. Their parking lot's full. And I'm thinking, man, the Lutherans are having a good, you know, good meeting. And I kept driving because I thought, you know, a little home group, maybe they doubled the home group. Maybe they took, you don't know. You go, you know, I mean, Joshua Mills, you know who he is? I mean, he went to a meeting, literally, he went to a meeting, told me himself the whole story, Sammy knows, where the, where the people said, well, there'd be so many people. When he got there, there was the husband and the wife and a couple of kids and cardboard people in the seats. No, I'm telling you, you can ask him if you see him. He said, they're cardboard people. Yes, but we're believing for real people. I think, oh, man. I said, I would have I left right then. He said, I stayed for seven nights. Bless the family. And I said, good for you. You're a better man than me. Because I would have taken that cardboard out in the back. But I didn't. Hallelujah. So we drove by. We drove three miles. No churches. I said, it can't be that church. You know what? Here you're in faith. Faith, hallelujah, revivalist, you know. I'm thinking, it can't be that church. So I drive, we'd come around. I thought, I'm going to check. But, man, they had the one year, that, you guys. I could barely get in the church. The church was in as a huge, a hu not a little church, a huge church, front to back, packed all the way around. Front was packed with about, I don't know, between 40, 50, 60 young people, mostly girls, 15, 16, 70, dancing. And the glory of God just sat on everybody, and the whole church danced. The whole church went like a heartbeat, bop, 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 the whole church. And all these young people just crying at the front, all newly saved. Most of the church newly saved, just got saved, all Spanish-speaking people. And the glory of God's, and I'm looking, I'm thinking, this is, and the pastor comes up, our father, our father is here. And I'm like, oh, man, where is he? And I'm like, oh, man, me. I'm telling you, you want to know how to go low in God when these things happen? You think you get a big head? Your head disappears because you don't know what you did. 
and God gives all the glory. Why? Because some sow, some water, but God gives the increase. So then, he that sows and waters is nothing, but it's God that gives the increase. God gave him increase. Why? Because they drank from the river and they gave. One more thing I want to share. I, I got saved. Any Mennonites? We'd like to honor the Mennonites today. See, the Mennonites, some of them don't even admit it. They're like, I'm not a Mennonite anymore. If you're born Mennonite, you are a Mennonite. Be proud of it. Hallelujah. But you're not. But you're humble. I'm proud of it. So. And so anyway, I got saved. Uh, no Mennonites here today? That's unusual for Ontario. Is this not Mennonite country? Oh, it's not. Oh, pardon me. We were just in Mennonite country. Grand Prairie. Wow. So um, I got saved in Quebec through a Mennonite, MCC, Mennonite Central Committee, sent some missionaries out. I was one, the one fish that jumped in the boat. I'm it. That I'm all they got. Praise God. But I tell them, you're, I tell them when I see them, you are reaping a lot of fruit from me, I'm telling you. And you won't know until you get to heaven, because some of them don't like my doctrine, said, don't matter, God will bless you anyway. Because you got me saved. Mennonite Central Committee, MCC, missionaries went out. In 1974, I got saved. Can you imagine? Awesome. Now, so a couple of years ago, Shirley and I are looking for a house in Abbotsford. And we're looking, and we're looking. Can't find it. Ain't God. You know that when you're looking for something that can be good, you look good, but it ain't God. And I started to not panic, but I'm like, honey, what are, you know, we know we're supposed to be here. We need a house. How are we going to get the house? I'm sitting, I'm at a, a meeting in Pitt Meadows. Where this guy from Ontario actually was preaching. And God says, I, I said, God, this is what I said to God. I have prayed, listen carefully, and prayed, and prayed, and prayed. And my wife prayed. And you haven't showed us where the house is. He goes, no. And he says, I'm not going to show it to you either until you sow. I said, what do you mean sow? He said, you're going to sow in this meeting right now. $500. What he told me. So, because how many know what the, what the measure is? If you're going to sow $500, that means your measure is 100. And it's five times your measure. It's how it works. And so God says, 500, you're going to sow 500. You can actually move up into thousands. I know people that move in 10,000s. That's their measure, 10,000. Kenneth Copeland, I know his measure, $100,000. That's his measure, minimum measure. It's amazing. Kenneth Copeland, $100,000. Kenneth Copeland's been given, how many, how many airplanes is it? Like dozens and dozens and dozens of airplanes. Because give away airplanes, your measure. It's his measure, so he gets back accordingly. God says, you're going to need $500, and you're going to this offering, you're going to believe me for a house, and I'm going to show you where a house is. I'm going to show you where it is. Can you imagine God going to show you where a house is? He was looking, 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 get nothing. So I'm sitting there, so I asked my wife, honey, we're going to have to sow if we want the house. She goes, yep, she's a sower. I call her a so-and-so. She sows and sows and sows. She's a so-and-so. So I said, how much? She knows our measure. 500. I said, yep, my, my amount too. So take $500, put it in the envelope. The bucket comes out, put it in. Not even one minute later, after the offering, the speaker comes out. You know what? There could be somebody in here. You just sold $500 for your house. You're going to get it. God's going to show you where it is. I'm sitting there. Oh, man, that was quick. So then I go home. That's uh, Saturday night. So I'm waiting. Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning. God's so good. Abbots for British Columbia. I wake up. God goes, get on the Internet right now and go to the, uh, it's the biggest Mennonite church in Abbotsford. Go to their website. I'm like, why? He says, your house is on there. And I, you know what, I'm like, I did it because God said it, but my house is on the church website? You're going to buy the church? I didn't know, what, you know, what am I going to do? So I go on there, one house. The guy that put it on their website lived in Surrey, doesn't even live there. He felt like, he's a Christian, he felt like the Lord told me after, felt like he should put it on that website. I go on there, it's been on four hours, I, I call them, nobody's phoned yet, I'm the first one. I said, listen, we want to take a look at the house and see who we are, okay? You can come over this evening. We come over at around supper time. Seventy some odd people had phoned. We're the first ones. So we go in. The word of knowledge is amazing. Because I sit there, I go in, and God's like, tell them that you went to Columbia Bible College. And I'm like, I don't even know if she's a Christian, right? But the house, the peace that was in the house, I'm like, oh, this is our house. I looked at Shirley, she's like, oh, but you don't want to give it away, right? Because Got to negotiate. So, okay. God says, tell them where you went to Bible school. I said, I went to Columbia Bible, Bible College. He's like, I just got hired there a month ago. I'm the, I'm the cook. Oh, you are. I said, uh, do you know this guy? He's my best friend. He goes, he's my best friend. I said, I went to Bible school with him. And I know what he's thinking. You Facebook me. Like he's thinking that. You fa I Facebooked him to try to get the house, you know, find some information. I could tell it, but I, I'm not. 
And then I went, do you know this guy? I was golfing with him last week. It was the craziest thing. He's like, I know everybody. But he's, he's like freaking out a bit. He's like, man, you know everything about me and my best friends and, and where I work. And I could tell, right? So they were a bit nervous. I said, afterwards, I said, honey, it's our house. She goes, yeah, but they look nervous. It's okay. I get a call a couple of days later. We'll give you the first kick at the camp, but you've got to come to the Bible school because the Bible school's right down the street. So we go in. We, we have to go to the kitchen, the back of the kitchen. There's a bookshelf. I look, he's taken from the library a whole bunch of yearbooks around the year. He thought I would be there. He has them all there. He goes, uh, which year were you there? Because he didn't believe me. Which year were you there? I went, oh, this one. I take it out. I forgot. I did the front cover of the yearbook. There's me. There's my name. There's the picture. I open up. There's me and his friend. He's like, yep, you got the house. Take the house. You got the house. No. No. This is the best part. No, the, I'm saving the dessert to last. He goes, you know, only Christians have ever lived in this house for like 37 years. Only Christians. Built by Christians, only Christians. In fact, this is what he tells me. So I didn't tell him how he got saved or anything. He says, this was, up until my uncle bought the house a couple years ago, and he bought it from his uncle, a wonderful young couple. He said, this house was the MCC missions rest house for all the missionaries from MCC around the world. When they'd come back, they'd come to this place, and they'd rest. And I got saved through MCC and a missionary, and now I, I live in the MCC missions rest house. It's so amazing what God can do. Here's what the Bible says. Your gift will make room for you and, and bring you before great men. There's something about sending a gift ahead. And here's what I want to do because we're going to... Can I have the ushers get the envelopes, please, ready? Because, and then you can come up to the front when they're ready. Because here's what I want you to do. Don't hand them out yet. I want you to pray now. If you can, and, and I'm saying can because not everybody can do it. If you can sow 500, sow 500 tonight. But sow it on purpose. This is a purpose-driven... God, you know, God leading purpose-driven offering. I don't want you just to throw something in the offering. I want you to pray and ask God, what do I need to sow in? What have I been praying and praying and praying for and it hasn't worked and I haven't received it? And just ask God, is this me today? You need to ask the Lord. Don't just do it because I'm saying, maybe this is something that God is speaking to you. Maybe you can only sow 400, you can only sow 100, whatever your measure is, but sow it. And sow it into Canada and say, God, I, I'm going to sow it in for something that I need. Don't sow and not expect to get back. That is so unscriptural, you're better not to sow. Because the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. You know what it says? It is one time it says give, and the rest of the scripture is seven different things about receiving. One give, seven things about receiving. So we're going to sow today. So it, let's just pass the envelopes at the end of the row and just pass them on. It's the easiest way that everybody can get one. And if you don't want to, if you don't feel to give, don't give, but I want you to pray about sowing. And if your measure is 1,000, sow 1,000. If it's 5,000, sow 5,000. But we're also sowing into Canada. If, you know what? We could say you could take your neighbor's purse, and, and, but we won't do that today. <laughs> that didn't go over in Ontario. Uh, you can give by check, debit. We have a debit machine at the back. Kaylee has a debit machine. You can give by debit machine. Oh, E-transfer, info, everybody. Are we, are we live streaming, Sammy, or no? Not today. So if you hear this at another time, because I think we're taping it, uh, you can give too. I've had people send offerings years later. I've had people watching me send offerings and get gold teeth watching me talk about gold teeth. A testimony from years ago about gold teeth, they get gold teeth. The craziest thing. And so we want to sow today, you guys. Sowing is so powerful. It's so powerful. And like Bill Prankert says, 80 to 90 percent of Canadians outside of their tithe sow into the United States and the ministries in the States because they're on television. And praise God for the Americans. But we come on behalf of Canadians. And we're not the end and be all, but we're something. And, and we want God to bless you. We do this to bless you, you guys. We do this for the blessing of the Lord on the churches, on your church. You can sow out of your church, out of your business. I'm waiting in the east especially. I'm waiting in the east for the big breakthroughs because the big breakthroughs will come. God's going to break through in Ontario. It's the season for Ontario. You know why? You've had a lot of keys and some of the combination, but God's about to give you the last one. And for some of you, your breakthrough is not coming. Your breakthrough is today because that pastor sowed that day. I said, don't sow in the future. Don't say revival's coming. Your breakthrough's coming. Say your breakthrough is here. Say your revival is here. When he did it, he got it. I mean, I know that's rare, but it's going to become more common. You know, and then I wondered, how many other revivals am I the father of and don't know? Hey, how many of you? You might, be, you might have led one person to the Lord, and you're the mother of some revival somewhere, and you don't even know it, and you're their mother of revival. You don't know it. Million is M-I-L-L-I-O-N. But make sure you have the money in the bank, right? 
Like we don't want faith checks that way. Oh, thank you, Lord. The angels are here. Every time I preach this specific message, uh, the angels that gather come. They gather your, there's angels that gather offerings. There are angels that gather stuff that's in the church that shouldn't be. They'll come, get rid of that. But the angels that gather offerings, because the Bible says that, that, that when Cornelius prayed, his prayers and his giving came up before God as a memorial, which means it stayed there. Some of you are going to get a breakthrough today, this afternoon. Some of you will get a breakthrough today. And you know, during, during, the, during the ministry, there's a bank machine, bank machine. <laughs> we rolled in a bank machine. There's a, debt, a debit machine. <laughs> I preached in the bank in San Jose. Preached in a bank. It was one of the most amazing meetings. Anyway, that's another story. The green room was the vault. <laughs> Hallelujah. Who needs more time? Some people need more time. So I'll just tread some water before I give it over to Sammy. Oh, God is good. Yeah, there's clear water in here. When you sow in a church, I'm going to tell you something. When you sow in a church like this, and when you sow to a church like this, listen, don't just sow to us, sow to these guys. Don't just give us a gift. Maybe God will move on you to give them something, you know, during the conference. I'm serious. It's not about us getting blessed. It's about you and us getting blessed. That's it. If you knew, if you knew the testimonies, I mean testimonies, maybe hundreds of financial breakthroughs, hundreds and hundreds and not little ones. You know why? Because in the glory, all things are possible to him that believes. All things are possible to him that believes is always there, but when the glory comes, it's especially there. Woo! Praise God, because then you begin to see the manifestation. Moses said, show me your glory, not tell me about it. You know what? We've heard a lot. We want to see the manifestation of breakthrough. We've heard about breakthrough. We prayed about breakthrough. Let's have breakthrough. We've heard about healing. We've heard about signs and wonders. We've heard about all these things. Let's have them now. Revival isn't coming. Revival's here. Yeah, the big harvest isn't here, but it is here, because Jesus said, don't say four months more. Amen. How, how many need more time? Put your hand way up if you need more time. Other than that. Okay, we can have the ushers and the usherettes. Come on up, receive the offering. Father, bless every offering today. Lord, if they're sowing for breakthrough for today, let it happen today. Just like those people, Lord, they sowed, and the next morning they had revival, and their church has grown. You guys, they need another building. They need land already. So we're going to go down in a couple of weeks and invade the church again and see what happens. It's, it's so awesome, you guys. I'm telling you, it's so awesome what God can do. If you keep drinking from the river and receiving offerings, that's what God told me my job was. Hallelujah. Can you imagine? Drinking from the river and receiving offerings will bring revival. Who knew? Who knew, you guys? You want to be able to minister to people like that? You got to get rid of your, all those uh, illegal Mexican immigrants that come down into Mexico. Well, probably half the church is full of those guys, but they're all safe, speaking in tongues, happy, and I don't care how they got in. I don't care if they, I like Trump, but I, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that, but I do. I like him anyway. Do they like Trump here? Okay. So, um, and I know, but I know more than you do about Trump. No, I'm not telling you. I can't tell you. I'm preaching. <laughs> I'd like to. Oh, I get drunk thinking about it. Hallelujah. You know, you know, I'll just share this. We're receiving the offering. Almost done. We're not going to offend anybody. I'm going to call Samuel. When Donald Trump got in, the power of God hit me. I fell on the floor, and here's what God said to me. He said, for the first time in the history of the United States of America, the night he got in, I made CNN tell me. I watched CNN, made him tell me that Donald Trump is the next president of the United States. And the moment they did, I fell on the, I slipped right on my chair, fell on the floor, glory of God hit me. And God said to me, for the first time in the history of the United States, the, 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 pre, the United States has a president that is not, uh, it, it, that doesn't have a political spirit or a religious spirit, right neither on, one. Right on, right on. So no matter what happens, you better praise God for that. Amen. Well. You know, Sammy said, if you've seen the son, you've seen the father. So I'm going to say, if you've seen the father, you've see, already seen the son. So, but he's going to come up anyway. But Sammy, really, God has anointed him. He's a great kid and, and has great ministry, voice of revival. And, um, and, but really, he has a heart for people to see people do well, to prophesy over people, to see, to see healing, signs, and wonders. And that's what we're moving in Canada. We, he wants to connect the nation together as a church. It's, it's not easy to do, but we're, it's going to happen. God's going to connect the church. God told me he's going to create an alliance from one sea to the end of the other sea, and we're going to connect it by faith, and we're going to connect it. Not, we're not the only ones, but that's our job to do because there's nobody going from here to here. They do one here in the odd one. But we're just going across for a reason and a purpose is to join the church together around the glory of God, around revival, and around drinking from the river. Amen. So let's welcome Samuel D. Robinson. Thanks, Dad. Come on. Hey. <laughs> How many just love Charlie Robinson? Isn't he awesome? 
Um, it, it's honestly, what a, what a surprise blessing to be here in this house. I absolutely love it. It's amazing. And how many know the Lord's doing great things? Amen. And uh, this is just the beginning. And uh, I can feel there's a couple things the Lord's going to do. Uh, just a little intro. My name's Samuel. Uh, I have an amazing wife all the way from Quebec. Her name's Kristen. We have three girls all under the age of five. And so pray for me. And uh, yeah, seriously. And uh, it's absolutely amazing. We live in Edmonton, uh, Alberta. And um, I used to live in Langley, British Columbia. And I thought, God, why are you sending me to the icebox of Canada? And I think we had something like 40 days straight of minus 30. Can I tell you something, friends? Hell is not hot, it's cold. <laughs> if we want to see national revival in Canada, can I tell you something? Just tell Canadians hell is cold. And they'll have to shovel driveways for eternity. I'm telling you, they'll all come in. <laughs> but it is so good to be here. It feels so good. And I, have you guys had a good time so far? Isn't the Lord so good? And we've got Bill Prankard with us tonight. And uh, I, I can feel the Spirit of the Lord. I'm telling you, there's, there's going to be some notable things that are going to take place right now. Um, I, I'm just, I'm going to monitor what the Lord's doing. So I'm, I'm talking, how many know uh, you can multitask in the Spirit? Amen? And this is a stretch for me. My wife tells me all the time, I'm not the best multitasker. But uh, in the realm of the Spirit, you can be in two places at the same time. And, uh, and so I'm talking to you here, but I'm also feeling here because there's a couple of things that are going to happen. Um, one thing for the church, and I have a, I have a 20 to 30 like, minute message, and I'm going to create an atmosphere. I'm hoping it's just 20, where I'm going to create an atmosphere because the Lord's actually going to restore everything that the devil tried to take from the previous season, and it's going to come sevenfold restoration. It is. I had, a crazy, I had a crazy encounter with the Lord, and what the Lord showed me, and what you guys are going to overcome in this next season, and how Ontario is looking. I'm going to tell you something right now, how Ontario is in desperate need of fathers and mothers in this season. And, and, I, and I'm telling you something, friends, right now, we're not fighting just for ourselves, but we're also fighting for the next generation. And, I, and I, it is an honor to be here, and I want to honor just the father and the mother of this house. Can we just bless them today and what the Lord's going to do? And I kept seeing all these young people that are about to come in and the, and the worship and everything. And it was packed, filled with young people from front to back. And there was a multi-generational thing that the Lord's going to do in Barrie, Ontario, and in this region. And I saw, like, all of these young people get trained up in a ministry school and all this stuff. And I'm going to get into it because I feel like here, I'll tell you something, friends. There is a cry in Barrie for fathers and mothers. And, and I felt like I heard the cry of the next generation. And, you know, Paul said it best. He said, you know, there's lots of teachers, but there's few fathers. And, and, I, and I'm going to tell you, it's, it's the spirit at work that try to take <laughs> many ministries out. And I'll talk about it. But I'll tell you this, friends. What's going to overcome is not a prophetic anointing. What we need in this season is a father and mother anointing. And it's going to overcome this spirit that's trying to cut off ministries when they get to a certain point. And also, the Lord spoke to me and said, there's people in here today, you've been struggling with depression, oppression, suicide, and the effects of this, and the Lord's going to deliver people from suicide and depression today. He will. And the effects of it, and some of, and some of the word curses that have been spoken against you that have affected your body, some of you, you have arthritis, there's been constant pain in your body, some of you, you've been dealing with no, you have no sleep, it's like insomnia, the Lord is going to deliver people all over this room by the Spirit of the Lord, and I've, we've already seen it, this year has been massive this way, we were just, I, I was just in Seattle, uh, Washington, preaching in a conference, there's probably about 450 people in this place, and and I don't, uh, to be honest, I, I like lighted rooms. I don't get all these places you go to. And I don't know if they're trying to, like, you know, rework Isaiah 60. And because uh, I felt like I was in gross darkness. You know what I mean? You, you, you look and the, the building's pitch black except for the spotlights that are on you. And I'm like, I can't even see anybody. I feel like I'm preaching by faith. And, uh, and I'm releasing this word. And I'm going to share a story by the end of this about how my mom, at the age of 14 years old, was admitted into a, a mentally ill hospital at the age of 14. 
And uh, they told her that she'd be in this place for the rest of her life. And she said, Samuel, I was a prisoner in my own mind. And when she was 20 years old, a minister came to her, and she had a powerful encounter with Jesus. Because how we know Jesus came to set the captives free. And he still does. And I shared this story, and I'm going to get into it at the end, but I shared this story, and I didn't know this, but there was a woman in the very back. Her mother killed herself literally 30 days before, and they had to put her daughter in a straitjacket because anytime she was out, she was so much in turmoil that she would cut herself, try to kill herself. They put her in a straitjacket. Her best friend pleaded with the nurse who was a Christian and said, can this lady come, can my friend come to the meeting because I believe Jesus wants to heal her and I couldn't see her. She was in the back in a straight jacket and, and both the friend and the nurse were praying that God would deliver her. At the same time, there was an 18-year-old kid that had a Bible bag with a handgun in it and he told the Lord, he said, God, if you do not reveal yourself to me, I'm going to blow my brains out tonight. See, there's a reason why we need the glory. It's more than a goosebump. It's more than a tickle. It is the power to change. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when I shared this story, nobody laid hands on them. The presence of Jesus came on this one woman who was in a straitjacket, and in one moment, she was completely, totally set free, and she was in her right mind, talking to her friend, saying, I don't need to be in this. It's all gone. It's all gone. I don't want to kill myself. I want to live. At the same time, this 18-year-old kid that has a gun in his Bible bag, all of a sudden, Jesus, the presence of Jesus comes down on his right side, and he's completely, totally delivered, comes to the front. Now, check this out. I'm ministering, okay? There's people here. Can you imagine this, Pastor? I, and an 18-year-old kid comes up to the front, and he's got his Bible bag, and he pulls out of his bag a handgun. And I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm Canadian. <laughs> when are we ever dangerous? What are we going to do, throw maple syrup at him? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, what? Here's a beaver. Like... And it's like, man, and, and this kid comes out, pulls out a handgun, walking down the aisle with a handgun. And I thought, this is it. This is how it ends. This is what I'm thinking. This is how it ends. This guy's coming up to the front. And all of a sudden, he takes that gun, and he holds it. <laughs> he holds it, and he pulls it out, and he goes to the pastor and says, Pastor, I don't need this anymore. Jesus has healed me, and I have a reason to live. See, friends, there's a lot of people here in Canada. So we, we think this is someone else's problem. There's a lot of people in Canada. There's a lot of people in Barrie. There's a lot of people in your area that need a reason to live. And the Lord spoke to me something. And I, I'm not this type of person, but I, I'm going to share this word because I had this encounter in my room. And the Lord spoke to me about the spirit at work that's trying to kill and destroy the anointings of mothers and fathers. Because I'll tell you something, friends. The devil is terrified of your seed. He's terrified of your seed. Why? Because the very first judgment against the enemy was that what? Is that he would strike her heel. But how many know the Bible says that her seed would crush his head. Crush his head. The seed. And the Lord spoke to me and said, Samuel, tell my people it's all about the seed. It's all about the next generation. It doesn't matter how old you are. We need to move in a generational mindset because we serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's a generational God. So what does that mean for you today? That means God doesn't just want to give you breakthrough. He wants to give your family breakthrough. He wants to give your kids, your grandkids, your parents, cousins, uncles, because that's what he cares about because he's a family God. And so there's an attack and there's a spirit. And now listen to me. I, I'm going to tell you this is a very interesting message. And I don't normally go here 
Because as soon as I go here, people go all weird. <laughs> all weird. And my message is called Overcoming Jezebel. <laughs> now I know some people, intercessors, I, I can feel it. <laughs> as soon as you mention Jezebel, I mean, it is like Xena warrior tongues come out. <laughs> it's like all over the room. And, and, you know, and then you have the other side that goes in complete like, oh, no, it's one of those Jezebel guys. Oh. And you get that. And I, listen, I, I get it. I get it. You're like, oh, no. And I just think it's so weird. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of Jezebel stuff is just weird. And I think, I think to be honest, um, I think we have to be very careful um, what we call discernment. Because <laughs> there's a lot of people, it's not discernment, you're just nosy. <laughs> and some of you, you're like, it's a Jezebel. No, that woman actually knows that she, who she is and she's a strong leader, so it's all good. And by the way, Jezebel is, does not... <laughs> is it okay? Guys, shoot straight. Guys, just, we got to stop turning this thing into this. It's a... Jezebel is a, is a woman thing. It's not a woman thing. It's, not, it's a spirit at work. And I'll tell you something. It, a lot of people think, well, you know, why are you talking about Jezebel? That's Old Testament. Actually, that's not true. Because a lot of people think it's just Old Testament. It's not. Because in Revelations chapter 2, Jesus speaks to um, the church of Theatera, and it, he actually says this. He talks about all the great things they do, but he says, I have this one thing against you. You tolerated Jezebel. Oh, oh my God, you want me to talk about Jezebel today? I, 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 listen, I would rather preach to a million Muslims <laughs> than talk about Jezebel, to be honest. But I'll tell you something, it's the spirit at work that's trying to cut off mothers and fathers, and it's going to take more than the anointing of a prophet to destroy Jezebel. It actually takes the anointing of a father. Many people try to, intercessors, prophetic people try to take on Jezebel prophetically. It doesn't work. Because there's a unique anointing. If you want to see Jezebel destroyed, it's a unique anointing, and it takes the anointing of a father. And I'm going to show you in Scripture how it works and what the Lord wants to do. Because here's the thing with Jezebel. It's an interesting thing. Because Jezebel, I believe, it represents two things, two major things. It's the fruit of Jezebel. Because when you read, and I, and, I, and I wrote some of this down, you know, this was by revelation. The Lord was speaking to me. And, and you don't have to go here, but 2 Kings, if you're taking notes, you want to look through this, I encourage you to. 2 Kings 9, verse 22, it talks about the fruit of Jezebel. And we see here that, whew, Jehu is actually writing to kill Jezebel. And one of Jezebel's sons says something interesting. It says, now it happened when J Jerome saw Jehu that he said, is it peace, Jehu? So he answered, what peace as long as the harlotries of your mother Jezebel and her witchcraft are so many? That's interesting. And here's what the Lord spoke to me. He said, Samuel, these two things are the fruit of Jezebel. And by the way, that another word for harlotries actually means idolatry. Can I tell you something, friends? It is the two things that is, um, that is so predominant in our generation right now. Idolatry and witchcraft, and it's in the church. And God wants to deliver people from the spirit of Jezebel. Because you know what idolatry is? I'll tell you something, friends. The greatest God that is on the earth today, I, I'm, now, now I'm talking little g, demonic g, is the God of S-E-L-F. And I see it all the time. And it's hard. Because we see things. And, and even we have to be careful that we don't take God and make Him in our image. And we have a generation. If we're not careful, even in the church... That we don't take the gospel and turn it into something that's humanistic. My Bible says it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. 
And we're living in a day right now where many people are choosing to try to do it with good plans. You can't change regions with good plans. You need God encounters. I promise I don't bite. (laughs) But I've been feeling this for hours. And I went to the gym and I did leg day, and I was like, shaka, ba 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 Jezebel's coming down in this region because God's raising up fathers and mothers. And we're in this, this generation right now. I'm going to tell you something, friends. If we're not careful, it's so easy for us to make gods huh, <laughs> of self. And we come to church, and we want it a certain way. When did that ever happen when it had to be a certain way our time? And, and all of a sudden, we, we start looking at things, and... Now we want God to move in our box, in our timeline. We look at our watch, being like, well, you know, God, I'm going to give you another 15 minutes. Have we gotten to that place where our time is more valuable than him? The second thing is witchcraft. And here's what the Lord spoke to me. He said, Samuel, I want to break off witchcraft in the church. He said, it's the greatest form of witchcraft. It's Christians speaking negative against Christians. I'm going to tell you something right now. You need to speak really well of your leaders. I honor these guys. I remember my dad taught me something at a young age. Helped me a lot. Because I used to just think I was everything. And I could do it so much better than, than this person. And of course, you're humble but proud of it. You know what I'm talking about? Just like, they just don't know what I know. You know, if they could only see... There's a lot of words I want to take back. You know what that comes out of? It comes out of a place of immaturity, not knowing who you are. Because when you know who you are and the responsibility that you carry, you'll start to realize, wait a second, if God's put people in certain places of authority, that means actually they have a great responsibility. And instead of judging them, and the truth is, if you can't do something about the situation, stop talking about it. I learned that from my wife. My dad would pull me aside. I remember I was, I was upset because something in the church and I was traveling with my dad. I'm like, Dad, you know, you travel all over the world. You see all these things. Like, it should be this way. And you know, here's, what's, here's what he told me. He said, Samuel, I'm going to tell you something right now. When the responsibility of this church comes before the Lord, you're not going to stand there before God. They will. He said, stop trying to put yourself in a position of authority. <laughs> when you're not willing to take any responsibility. Friends, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta clean up our act, speak well of each other. We need, to, we need to operate in the power of the blessing and not to curse. I'll tell you, some people here today, if we would choose to move in blessing instead of cursing with our mouth, our bodies would be healed right now. And some of us today, because we've been operating in negative spirits and we don't realize that the Bible says this in Hebrews, that God framed the world with his words. Can I tell you something? Every single believer, every single person frames their world with their words. If you're constantly negative about things and you constantly tear people down, you actually create a toxic environment in which you live in that brings in sickness and disease and all types of evil. And if we would allow God to purify our tongue and say, God, I want to speak the way that you want me to speak. Can I tell you something? Now I'm one of the most positive people. You know why? I fear the God in every Christian. Even when they don't believe the same way that I do, we choose to bless. Amen? But see, here's the thing. There's a spirit at work, a Jezebel spirit at work, And here's the mission of Jezebel, and I'll tell you very quickly. The mission of Jezebel is to rob you of the inheritance that God has called you to. How do I know that? How many remember Naboth's vineyard? Naboth's vineyard. And it's interesting, because here's what the Lord spoke to me. He said, Samuel, this church, this house is a vineyard, and it carries fresh wine. And I've called every single Christian to move in the wine of my spirit. But you know what the spirit at work wants to do? It wants to take your vineyard and turn it into a vegetable garden. You know what that means? Same ground, but now it's a different flow, meaning it's a form of godliness that denies the power. 
And how many times have we seen in different movements where it started off in revival and now it's no longer in revival because now people have bought a form and their faith is in a system or a method instead of his spirit. And how do I know that this is true? Because Naboth told Ahab, he said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. Friends, I'm going to tell you something right now. It is time to fight for the inheritance of our fathers. Because you're here today and receiving today, not because just because of yourself, but somebody sowed with tears so you could reap with joy. It's bigger than you and me. And we see this. And there's this corruption at the highest level with Ahab and Jezebel. And there's all this stuff that's going on. But God raises up a prophetic voice. And I'm going to tell you something, friends. In the midst of darkness, there is a prophetic voice that is rising up in Canada. Don't tell me we don't need the prophetic. We need it now more than ever. We need the word of the Lord. Because the word of the Lord will change everything. And we see God raise up, and it's like almost out of nowhere. Here's the prophet Elijah. My goodness. I can't wait to meet him one day. I, I bet you he was a gnarly dude. Man, I'm telling you. You'd listen. I mean, you've got to have a couple screws rambling in there. To be like, think about this. Think about the boldness. There will be no rain. Elijah, did you consult anyone before you said that? <laughs> no rain. I'm thinking you realize you're putting everybody under, uh, like, oh, that's a lot of pressure. No rain until I say so. Can you imagine if that was in our churches? People would be like, oh, my goodness, Martha, look at the arrogance. I can't believe he just said that. We'd get so offended. But can I tell you something? God loved it. And it's going to come back again. And it's going to. Because it's in the Bible. And we're going to see a fire and a boldness in the prophetic word of the Lord. Are you ready for it? And it's going to get younger and younger. Are you ready for your kids? Here's eight-year-old Bobby standing up with the mic. It's going to snow at my word. You're like, no! <laughs> Why? Because when the word of the Lord comes, it doesn't matter the vessel. See, if we can get over, I'm going to tell you something, friends. You want the word of the Lord in Barrie, Ontario? Get over the whole thing about the vessel and what it needs to look like. If we can get over the vessel, we'll get the words. Because God is raising up vessels, Elijah's in this season that are going to carry a word from heaven and they're going to shift atmospheres. <laughs> and so here we go. Here's this dude. And there's no rain. And it brings the whole nation, the whole nation under craziness. Like, I mean, it's crazy. Crazy. Everything's going nuts. Can I tell you something? If Elijah had a Facebook page, everybody would unfriend him at that moment. <laughs> He wasn't in it for reputation. He wasn't in it to be popular. He was in it for a mission to change culture. He was in, a, in it for a mission because he had a word of the Lord. What's your word? So we see this. And then all of a sudden you read 1 Kings 18. I love it. You read 1 Kings 18. It's amazing. He's like, come on now. He's like, we're, we're about to have a little standoff. And I'm like, you read this, and sometimes we just go, oh, yeah, Elijah called down fire. What? He brought the nation together, and he had the, the stones <laughs> to say, the God who answers by fire, he is God. You know what the people said? Yeah, yeah, we like that. That sounds good. No kidding. Man, I have a hard time getting someone to stand up for a headache. You're going to be healed. 
here's someone, you're going to call down fire. The nation's there. I'm talking about, if that happened now, you'd have 20 million on pay-per-view. Like, I'm telling you, it's crazy. But here's the wildest thing. I've realized something. One of the most notable, notable sign took place. I mean, fire came down on the altar, sucked up all the water, the sacrifice, the whole thing. Elijah says, we're going to kill the prophets of Baal. All of a sudden, all, of that, all this wild stuff happens, like crazier than a movie. Here's the thing. In the midst of all of that, still no change. Still no change. Can I tell you something, friends? You can have the greatest conference in the world. You can get touched. You can have an encounter. You can get healed. But if it does not translate into Monday, into Tuesday, into Wednesday, if it does not translate into your family and all these things, I'm going to tell you something, friends. We had a good event but it wasn't a life-defining encounter. Canadian oil, when we do this, I told the Lord, I said, God, I'm not going across Canada sacrificing time with my family, all these things for nice conferences. I don't, I don't, I don't need to do that. We get to speak all over the world, and it's awesome, it's amazing, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm not here for a conference. I'm not here to speak. I don't need to speak. I'm here because I believe that God wants to give you a fresh encounter. And in the midst of this, Elijah gives his best shot. I mean, it's rocking. And people are getting touched, but in the midst of this, there's still no change. And if you read, I want you to turn with me right now. It's very significant. First Kings chapter 19. I'm going to try to hurry through this. I want you to see this. Because in the midst of everything that goes on, this incredible victory, it says in verse 1, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elisha had done, also how he executed all the prophets with a sword. Then look at this. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life. Wait a second, that doesn't even make sense. You just took on all the prophets of Baal. You just took on all this stuff. All of a sudden, the nation is getting sparked. And one word from one woman, a letter, spooked you so much that you ran for your life. This is the prophet who called down fire. Can I tell you something, friends, right now? Whew. <laughs> See, the demonic spirits in this area really don't like you guys. They don't. They don't. Nope. Some of us today, we need to remember, no, you're not leaving. And that, that's my word. You're not leaving. I'll tell you something. Some of us today, we have to realize that the devil is here not to play nice. And some of us, we just think, if I'm just a good Christian, everything's going to be okay. That's not true. My Bible says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We have to re remember that we are in a war. There is a battle today. And the devil wants to destroy your family. He wants to take everything he can away from you. But I'll tell you something. My Bible also says in John 10, 10, but I have come to give you life and abundant life. And we see this here. There's an attack. Jezebel attacks the prophet Elijah, and it shakes him to his core. You ever felt like you gave something everything? And all of a sudden, it's like this attack comes out of nowhere and it just hits you to a point where you don't know what to do and you just you feel like you just want to run you feel like you don't know what to do and we see this here with Elijah and it goes on to say and, and this this boggles me verse 4 it says but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and he came and sat under a broom tree and he prayed that he might die and he said it is enough now look at this I want you to get this because this is so key right now for you this right here is so key because you're about to get into Elijah's brain. Texts like this helps you think the way that they think. If you want to move in what they moved in, you also need to learn how to think the way that they think. And we're seeing something here of Elisha's thought process. And he says to God, he says, it is enough. Anybody ever felt that way? It is enough. I'm done. 
It's like, I, I don't, God, I, I, I don't know what else to give. I feel like I give everything. You ever felt that? Like, you know, can I tell you where I learned that the most in this season? Being a parent. With three girls under the age of five. You know what I'm telling God? Enough! I'm done with the diapers! You know what I realize with kids? And I see this with family. You can, you can train your kids. You can do all these things. And I think it's one of the hardest things when I see parents that come to conferences sometimes and they're believing God for their kids. And it's not that they were bad parents. They feel like they poured in everything that they can. But yet their kids still made decisions that they're like, what's going on? And it's like, God, what's going on? It's just enough. I'll tell you something. People only say it is enough when they've given everything. You don't say this unless you've given everything. It is enough. What are you saying? God, I feel like my own abilities are not enough. I feel like what you've given me, what I have right now, is not enough to where you want to go. And I just want to give up because I feel like it's too hard. I'm going to tell you something, friends. Some of you are in a place where you feel like it's too hard. Do not give up now. You're closer to breakthrough than what you think. And it goes on to say, now, Lord, take my life. But look at this. For I am no better than my father's. I'm no better than my father's. Fatherlessness is systemic. We see here the prophet saying, God, I'm no different than any of the other guys that have gone before me. And it's interesting because here is Elijah and he feels like he wants to give up. He wants to die. He's given everything. And I love this about God. Because <laughs> how many know God didn't call Elijah out to the wilderness? But how many know God still provided for Elijah in the wilderness? And I love it. Because for some of you, you might have a sweet tooth. Can I, I, listen, when I see that hot cake, I think, man, it's a Krispy Kreme. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and God gave Elijah a cake. Fed him, fed him again, and then he went on a journey. And it's amazing. How many know when you're real with God, God does not get upset? Can I tell you something, friends? Some of us, we think, oh, God, if I get, you know, if I really share my heart, the lightning is going to come and it's going to be all over. No. You see what God says? Hey, Elijah, what are you doing? You know when I read that, you know what I feel? The heart of a father. You know what my dad does for me when I'm having a tough time? Hey, Sammy, what's going on? And he's not saying that to be nice. And he's not just saying that to strike up a conversation. He's saying that because he cares and he wants to know what's going on. And you're like, Sammy, what are you talking about? God knows everything. Yes, he does. But can I tell you something? He wants to hear it from you. What are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? Here's Elijah. And he just says, God, I've given it everything. This nation's killed the prophets. It's done all this stuff. And I'm the only one. And even though he wasn't the only one, God could have corrected him in that moment. He doesn't. Elijah, what are you doing? And all of a sudden, he goes through this prophetic experience in 1 Kings 18. It's amazing. First, sorry, 1 Kings 19. Uh, just amazing. All of this stuff happens. The fire, the earthquake, the wind, all of this incredible stuff. But how many know it says that God wasn't in any of those things? Because <laughs> the truth is, when you're in the room and God's moving, that's the only thing you care about. We don't do this to be popular. We don't do this for money. We do this because we get to encounter his glory. And Canada will be saved. And I love it because it keeps going on. And if you read 2 Kings chapter 2, one of the coolest things. And Can I tell you what God was doing? He was preparing Elijah for his ultimate calling. See, most people don't realize Elijah's ultimate calling. People think Elijah's ultimate calling was to be a prophet. It's not. Elijah's ultimate calling was to be a father. And so all of a sudden, all of this stuff is being stripped away from Elijah. And at the very end, the still small voice comes to Elijah and says, Elijah, what are you doing? And then it goes on to say, Elijah, this is what's going to happen. You're going to find a young guy. <laughs> You're going to find a guy named Elisha. 
and you're going to anoint him, and he is going to be your successor. Can I tell you something, friends? The ultimate calling of a Christian is to be a mother and a father. Because Jesus said, if you have seen me, you've seen the Father. And Elijah doesn't realize that he's in the midst of the hardest time. This is why God is about to move in your church like never before. Because the heart of a father and a mother, it's the thing that the enemies try to kill and destroy. But God says you're standing and you're going to raise up a generation. A generation. Can you imagine? Here's Elijah. And it goes on first. Chapter 20, and I don't have enough time because I, I want to pray for people. Duh. Duh. Are we good? Is this okay? You know, we're going to pray for people because I'm telling you, the atmosphere is spinning. There's angels in this place, and things are going to happen. People are going to get set free. It's going to be awesome. But Elijah finds this guy, Elisha. Can you imagine? You're the prophet. You've been doing this for a little bit. And you see this young dude. I'm calling him young dude. You know, I like Elijah. You know what he does? Talk about this. He takes off his mantle and he puts it on the shoulders of Elisha. And all of a sudden, he feels something. But you know what it looks like? It looks like Elijah's going to move on. I'm thinking, if that was my word, I would have come to him and said, listen, kid. God told me. You're going to come with me. Get out of here. Come with me. We're rolling out now. Elijah's checking something. How bad? How bad does Elisha want it? Can I tell you something, friends? God always gives you a taste to whet your appetite for something that you have the potential to live out, but most of the time it never comes. High five, buddy. Come on. I like this guy. God will give you a taste of the potential of what you could be moving in, but how bad do you really want it? How bad do you really want it? I mean that. Some of us, were like, if we just get our word, we're happy, and we go. When God's saying, I actually want to speak to you clearer than you've ever heard before. I actually don't want to just heal your body. I want you to operate in healing everywhere that you go. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you start to see. Here, it says that Elisha becomes the servant of Elijah. And I, I just, I pray about this sometimes. And I'm trying to put myself in the picture of Elijah. Can you imagine? Here's the prophet Elijah. He's done some wild stuff. And he's got this guy. You know what's interesting? I'm just going to throw out a question. I don't know. I wonder if Elijah ever told Elisha that he was going to be a successor. I don't think so either. Can you imagine living your whole life or the remainder of your life? <laughs> this is good for some of us. This is really good. Because we're looking for pastor to, like, tell us that we're the next guy. We're looking for the minister to point us out, to give us the word that we need to be called to this. And I bet you Elisha was next to the prophet every day, and the prophet never gave him one word. Some of us would be like, that's not fair. You're not loving on me. Grow up. If you want a word, read your Bible. Because I'll tell you something, I'm not a pocket prophet, and I never will be. And you should not expect that. Because the truth is, even if I gave you a word and you had that mentality, you wouldn't even be able to receive it. And here's someone that just had a heart to serve because he felt something and he experienced something that he wanted more of, and he wanted to just be around it. When's the last time you just wanted to be around it? just want to be there. I don't care. People ask me all the time, Sammy, why, why do you do certain services? Why don't you do more of these and this and this? Build your ministry. I don't care. Can I tell you why? I just want to be in the room. I don't care. I'll tell you something. I'm going to show you something right now. Most people have no idea. No idea about, I want to turn there really quickly. 2 Kings chapter 2. This is going to help you. 2 Kings chapter 2 is the transitional chapter where Elijah is about to get taken up, and Elisha, and many of us know the story, asked for the double portion 
of his spirit. Now, I, I'm going I'm to break some things down because we miss something here. And I, I want to start here, and I'm going to want to look at this because I, I feel like this is good for us. I want you to look here at verse 6. 2 Kings 2, verse 6. And it says something interesting because, you know, the first five verses it goes through, you know, Elijah tells Elisha, hey, listen, I'm going over here. Why don't you stay here? And, and Elisha's like, I'm not leaving your side. Can I tell you something, friends? Some of us, we need to get so desperate with God and say, God, I don't care where you go, I'm going to be there. How many want to be there when it strikes? Amen? Thank you. But look at this, verse 6, and this is where I feel even with the house. Look at this. Then Elisha said to him, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to the Jordan. Can I tell you something, friends? You know what the Jordan symbolizes? Transition. You know where many of us are in right now? A place of transition. That's why we don't feel like we have complete clarity is because we're in places of transition. And where we're going, we've never been before. And we need the presence of God more than ever. Canada needs a fresh encounter with the presence and the glory of God because where we're going, we've never been. And we see this. And that they're about, they're at the waters of transition. And I love being in cities that have large bodies of water because the Lord speaks to me all the time. He says, Samuel, in places like this are places that are actually going to lead the way in some of the greatest transition in the body of Christ. That's why being here with Lake Sim, I just I was walking around Lake Sim, go, shaka ra ba 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 ra ba 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 Can I tell you why? Because there's great transition. And I believe the church is moving from glory to glory. And I love this because it goes on to say, look at this. <laughs> it says, verse 6, And the Lord said to him, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to the, the Jordan. And it goes on to say, but he said, as the Lord God lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on, and 50 men's, men of the sons of the prophets went and stood facing them at a distance, while the two of them stood by the Jordan. Now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water and it divided this way and that so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. Now look at this. They're on the other side. And it says in verse 9, And so it was when they crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask. Say ask. Ask. ask what may I do for you before I am taken away from you? Look what Elisha says. Elisha says, Please let a double portion of your spirit, say spirit, look at this, double portion of your spirit be upon me. What does Elijah say? You've asked a hard thing. Why did he say that? Oh, this is really good. Because when the Lord showed this to me, I said, this is wild. I've never heard this before. Here's the reason why it was a hard thing. See, many of you, when you read this, and it goes on to say this, nevertheless, if you see me when I'm taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. Then it happened, as they continued on and talked, that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them. And Elisha went up by a whirlwind into heaven. You know why it was a hard thing? See, we look at this, and we think it's the test of Elisha, which is true but we forget something. It was a hard thing because Elijah also realized it wasn't just Elisha's test. It was Elijah's test. Did he raise up a son that was more interested in the signs and the wonders, just like Israel when he called down fire? Or was this man going to see something beyond that. And it was the greatest test of Elijah to see if he was truly a father. Can I tell you something, friends, today? Do you know how you know true mothers and fathers? By the fruit of their children. Can I tell you something? I have a good dad. How many like Charlie? Isn't he a good guy? He's a great guy. And my mom, if you met my mom, you realize, listen, I've served the Lord, I'm telling you, all my life. Because I have praying parents and a mom that is so highly prophetic, I used to try to, you know, be rebellious. I couldn't. She'd get words of knowledge and say, you want to do this, this, and this. Don't do it. And I'm like, well, that takes out half the fun. It 
it's not just Elisha's greatest test, it's Elijah's. Did he raise up a true successor? Because he realized what he was asking for, he couldn't give. Only God could give. But also, also, he knew that if he was going to get what he needed, he knew that the revelation of that father anointing, father and son anointing, had to be in with him and Elisha. He was about to see if his investment into his servant, his son, who was enough to see the double portion. Can I tell you something, friends? We are about to see the double portion on the next generation. Not because, I, I want you to get this, not because the next generation is so great. And I hear this all the time. You know what the Lord spoke to me? He said, Samuel, it's not that the next generation is so great, but it's because of a generation of mothers and fathers that understood the anointing of being a mother and a father. And if we truly mother and father the right way, their ceiling will become the next generation's floor. And I'm walking in things today, not because of my well-doing and all the things that I've done. It's because I have parents that saw something in me I couldn't even see in myself. And we see something powerful, beautiful in this passage of scripture because it says they were walking and all of a sudden the chariots of fire come Whew. and it separates Elijah and Elisha and here's about the greatest test of both of their ministries one that is about to go into glory the other one that's about to step into their new ministry and I love it, it's so beautiful and it's so amazing because we can see, you can picture this. I can picture this. Look at this. I'm gonna, again, I'm going to start here in verse 11. Then it happened as they continued on and talked that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and it separated the two of them. And Elisha went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Now look at verse 12. And Elisha saw it and he cried out, My father, my father. Why did he say it twice? It was the devil, but it was also, I'll tell you something too. It was the passing of both tests. Number one, he sees Elisha go up. And the first thing he says is, my father. Test passed for Elijah. And then the second thing that happens as he's watching Elijah go up, he has a revelation of the Father. One passes the test and goes into glory. The next one passes the test and operates in the double portion of the anointing of his spiritual father. My father, my father. More than ever, we need a move of mothers and fathers. We need it. Canada needs it. And I believe we're here today. Canadian oil is a representation of a father and a son working together. I really do. I do. And if you meet, you know, if you've never met Bill Prankert, he, he you know, Stephen couldn't make it this trip but he normally travels with Stephen. That's his spiritual son. He actually handed over the whole ministry. The reason why we're doing this is we believe in this. Because forever, God will be known as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I'm going to tell you something, friends. If we want to see this thing, this spirit at work that's trying to rob the next generation of their inheritance. Friends, I'll tell you something. It's Proverbs 13, 22. A good man leaves an inheritance to their children's children. Friends, right now, we are called not to release spiritual debt, but we're called to release a spiritual inheritance to our children's children. Every conference, I'm going to end with this, and we're going to pray because I know there's miracles going to happen in this place. Some of you are going to get set free today. Set free. I mean totally set free.
every conference before we leave, we, me and my wife and our kids, we get together, we do like a power prayer huddle. I'm a, I'm a basketball player, so I, I love huddles. I don't know what it is. I, just, I like it. And I, I got a five-year-old, three-year-old, almost three, and a one-year-old. My one-year-old's a big baby, man. I mean Michelin baby, like chunky monkey. Man, I mean, whoo. She can carry a lot of glory, let me tell you. And uh, we get together. Every time the Lord spoke this to me, we, we pray. The Lord always tells me, pray with your eyes open. He says, I want you to burn in the image of your kids every time you go out. I'll tell you some friends, there's times it's not easy, and I'm not, I'm not looking for sympathy. There's times when you go and you preach the gospel, you, you, you do things. It's, you're, not, you're not doing it for the fanfare, let me tell you that right now. There's something in you. There's a burning desire, and it should be in you too, and I believe it's in a lot of you. What are we going to leave for the next generation? We're at a crossroads in Canada right now where we might feel like we're okay, but I'll tell you something, my kids are about to go to school. They're about to, they better know who they are. We're about, they're about to go into a workplace that a lot of things have changed right now, and there's a lot of things, spirits at work, that are trying to take out the next generation. God told me, he says, every time you go out, you keep your kids in your heart because you must believe that you're going to leave this world better than what you found it in. I remember the first time I did this, I had an encounter. I'm going to end with this, and we're going to pray. I had an encounter. The first time I, I saw a generation, I believe it was my, my, my parents' generation, that had the faith. And I know it started before this, but I, it was like my parents, this is what I saw. My parents' generation had the faith. Started going after some of these giants. Some of these giants started to fall. Whew. Started going after things that now is, you know, I remember... My dad telling me when healing, talking about healing was almost taboo. And people didn't understand the prophetic. And all of a sudden there was people that were risen up in Canada, United States, all over the world that started moving in this. That now there's such, so much of an open, openness to the gifts of the Spirit. And the Lord showed me, he said, Samuel, there's a generation that crosses over into the promise. Then he said, there's a generation that takes the land of the promise. But he said, Samuel, there's a generation that's coming. That the very first breath that they take will be revival. I saw little baby boys and baby girls coming into the world and the first breath they took, it was like Isaiah 60, the glory of God all over the nation. It was like permeating that even babies, the very first breath, there was like no difference between being in heaven and being on the earth because there were Christians that believed that we could have heaven on earth. All right. Ooh, how many are stirred? Oh. I'm stirred. I feel like I drank five Red Bulls in the spirit, man. I'm like buzzing. <laughs> Here's the thing. We don't have to try to go after this, the, like Jezebel stuff. We don't have to go after it. Here's what we need to do. We need to operate in our true identity. When Christians start to operate in their true identity of who they are and realizing pouring into the next generation, believing for the next, believing for your kids, your grandkids. Keep pushing it. Don't stop. They're closer now than ever. Even if it looks dark, they're closer now because you're praying for them. And my Bible says his word will not return void. It'll accomplish everything that it's set forth to do. Here's the first thing I want to do. There's people here today that you've had, you've been struggling, and it's a demonic assignment, it's a demonic attack against your mind. There's people here that have had some kind of mental torment, depression, oppression, maybe even suicide, and it's, there's been a battle in your mind right now. If that's you, if you've had some kind of attack, I know this, this is a sensitive issue, and I take this very, I'm telling you, with, a, with honor and grace, if that's been you and you've been battling these things, I want you to stand right now all over this room. Be bold very quick right now all over this room. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord's about to break some of this stuff off right now. 
Some of you, there's been a lethargicness that's come against you. God's going to break it off right now. I just want you to lift up your hands. Like I said to you, my mom, when she was 14 years old, her mother had, uh, they, they said her mother had mental illness. And when my, my, my mom was born, long story short, she said there were spirits at work that try to keep her captive in her mind. It's like her mind, it's like she would try to tell her body to do one thing and her body did another thing. And she said, Samuel, I was a prisoner in my own mind. And at 14 years old, she was in a mentally ill hospital. She was in there for six years. The nurse told her when she first came in, she said, honey, look outside because you'll never see the light of day again. For six years, my mom was in a straitjacket in a cell. They gave her all this wild stuff. She said, Samuel, I felt like a wild animal. I didn't know what to do. She said, I, in my head, I knew that this wasn't right, but my body was doing something else. And she's like, I was a prisoner in my own mind. And she said, Samuel, at the age of 20 years old, I've been in there six years. A Baptist minister came because he believed in visiting the sick. And he started talking to each person about Jesus. And I was the last cell at the very, very end. And he said, and the Baptist minister came to me at the very end and said, honey, I want to talk to you about Jesus. Started talking to her about that someone loved her, that someone cared for her. My mom just started to cry. And the Baptist minister said, do you want to accept Jesus? And she said, Samuel, I tried to say yes, but a demonic hand came over my mouth. And the Baptist minister knew that something was going on and said, listen, if you can't speak, just nod your head. And my mom nodded her head. And this minister started leading my mom into a salvation prayer. And at the end of this prayer, my mom said, amen. The moment she said, amen, Jesus himself, that presence, the power of Jesus, came right down on her right-hand side, and she was completely, totally in her right mind. She started talking normally, functioning normally, everything normal. She had less than a grade three education. Perfect, fluent, everything, coherent, everything. Coherent, like... Like nothing was lost. The president of the organization came in the next day, looked at my mom and said, there's something different about you. We don't know what to do. So they gave her a job at the very place that they put her in. She worked there for another five years and saw people get completely, totally healed of all mental illness. The Lord spoke to me and said, Samuel, you're going to go back to that place. I want to show you that place. And I said, God, I don't want to go. It's too painful. God said, I want to take you there. I remember going, I told my wife, I, I was so embarrassed, I said, I, I got to do, you know, I, 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 like, I have to go out there, I got to do some ministry out in Quebec. I remember going to Quebec and driving to this place, it was so decrepit, it had been shut down, I remember it was so gross, and I remember going inside of this building, and it, 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 I was like, Lord, what am I doing? And the Lord's like, I want you to go inside, and this building had been completely shut down, barred down, but the door was so messed up and broken, and it was open, I remember going inside, walking in, and it was like every hair was standing up. Like, Lord, what am I doing? And the God says, as soon as I turned in, turn around. And I turned around, and it was this big, like, I mean, like, these huge, this brick building, and it was just all dark, musty. And I remember looking up, and just above the doorway, there was a plaque, and it said, in loving memory of Shirley Robinson, commemorating for all of her service. And I remember looking at this thing. Thinking, God, why did you bring me here? What's with the plaque? And here's what the Lord spoke to me. He said, Samuel, what the enemy used for evil, I'm turning around for your good, and you're going to carry an inheritance to see depression and mental illness come off a generation. It's going to come off. It's going to come off of you today. Because Jesus still delivers. So, Father, right now, I, if you're standing, I just want you to lift up your hands. Right now, all over this room. Father, I just thank you. I take authority right now over all torment, all oppression. Right now, in Jesus' name, I take authority over all depression right now, in Jesus' name. Loose! In Jesus' name, all over this room, right now, we break your power in Jesus' name. I release right now healing and deliverance over every person right now. And I bind every spirit, every negative voice that's trying to tell you to give up, that's trying to tell you to kill yourself. Every lying spirit is silenced now in Jesus' name. Lord, we just release peace. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet right now. 
In Jesus' name, Lord, I just thank you. Just release it now. In Jesus' name, there's just healing coming to in your body from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I just see your body just getting realigned right now. And like, there's just a, like a wave right now. There's, I just see like, like entered, like just the, just the energy of life coming back right now Ooh, in Jesus' name. And all the fogginess goes in Jesus' name. And it's a time of clarity being released in Jesus' name. Whoa. Lord, we just release it from the top of our head to the soles of our feet right now in Jesus' name. Whoa, God, I thank you right now. Lord, just release it. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Uh, there's just something about there's a peace coming over the mind. Whew. Sometimes your mind races, and the Lord just wants to bring peace. We just release peace right now in Jesus' name. Peace. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Complete and total healing now all over this room. In Jesus' name. Lord, we just release peace, even in the back to the lady in the red in the black. Lord, just we just release healing in Jesus' name. I'm gonna come back here right now. Lord, just release peace. Peace. There's just like I just Lord. The negative words that have been against her and spoken against you and just like things, even from people that were close to you before, what I think it's just being broken now in Jesus' name. There were things that were spoken to you a while ago that caused a lot of heartache and pain, people that were close and you thought they were safe and all of a sudden some stuff happened and that there was an attack against relationships that the Lord right now is just releasing you from. And I just see it, sometimes it feels like a movie screen and it's just on replay and the Lord's removing that from you right now. It's a new season. There were dreams and things that were said that you just felt like your dreams got buried alive. God's saying right now that dreams are coming back to life right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, the dreams are coming back right now. Lord, I just release it. Thank you, Jesus. All over this room, right now. Thank you, Lord. Right now, God's just touching you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Whoa. Whoa, right now. Thank you, Lord. Lord, just, I thank you where there was inheritance that was like taken from you. God's restoring right now. There's inheritance right now, family inheritance. Lord, just release it now in Jesus' name. What the enemy tried to take away, God, you are restoring right now. There's a revelation of the love of Jesus being released over you right now. In Jesus' name. Just, Lord, right now, there it is. We just release the words of the Father. Right now, Lord, as my father's released an inheritance, a fatherly blessing and inheritance, I just release that over him. Right now, the inheritance and the blessing of a father. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Well pleased. Well pleased. And there's sometimes, there's, I just see it, any critical voice, any critical voice, it's just being silenced right now. All the negativity that's trying to attack in your mind is just being silenced right now. God says he's for you. He's for you. He's for you. There's more for you in this season than there are against you right now in Jesus' name. And the Lord's restoring. Lord, we just speak restore in Jesus' name. Right now. Things are just coming into alignment too, Lord. From the top of his head to the soles of his feet, just release it right now. Whoa. Jesus, just release. Thank you, Lord. Lord, just release it right now. Whoa. I 
just see you. It's like you're standing at the door. God, when's it going to open? Oh, Lord, I thank you. Lord, for the keys of wisdom right now that you're going to release. Ecclesiastes 10.10 10 is your verse. Ecclesiastes 10.10. 10. Wisdom is your key. Lord, I thank you for supernatural wisdom being released. Lord, I thank you for the anointing to raise up spiritual sons and daughters. Father, release it. And Lord, whoa. I thank you, God, where it's like, man, I just see right now, Lord, that even when he's like, man, I sowed and sowed in this and this, it's like, man, God, I feel like I got the short end of the stick. God says, no, you've just invested, and the Lord's going to give you a return on investment. If there's a return on investment, and you haven't missed anything, Lord, we just release it in Jesus' name. Ooh. And the, the guy in the green I, with the hoodie, I like that guy. I can't get you, but I'm going to pray. I think you're the drummer. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, right now. Lord, we just release your glory from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. God's so proud of you. He's so proud of you. And here's, here's your word. It's the same word God gave me a few years ago. He said, I'm going to hold your hand, and I'm going to walk with you, and I'm going to walk with you through places of the unknown, and I see you stepping into new places of greater faith and times of stretching where it's like you feel like, man, life is squeezing everything out of me. And the Lord's like, you don't have to be worried. You don't have to be worried. I've got your back. Everything's okay. Lord, we just release it now in Jesus' name. And I just release just supernatural finances right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for supernatural provision this year. Lord, open up new opportunities for him right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for creative ideas that you want to release to him right now. And I thank you for his heart, Lord. I just see that you, there's like a, you're, God is going to move in a generous spirit through you, and that you're going to be a blessing to so many. And I see those that have never had a home. God is saying that you're going to be one that's going to create natural and spiritual homes. Lord, just release it now. In Jesus' name, Lord, all over this room. Thank you, Lord. God just wants to, yeah, he wants to touch you, but he also wants to heal you, too. You've got a couple things wrong with you, right? Yeah, like your, your body's out of alignment. I, like, n like, I don't know if it's the neck and the back, and it kind of goes down. I just saw the Lord just wanting to straighten everything out. Yeah, even to some of your energy levels spin off. Does that make sense? And just even some of the, the just, like, hear me out. I, I don't know if it's been battles against depression, but I saw, like, emotion stuff up and down. It's affected, like, just eating, thyroid, all that stuff. The Lord wants to, does this make sense? Yeah, so the Lord wants to touch you completely. Come here, can I have your hand? What's your name? Shelly. Lord, we just thank you for Shelly right now. In Jesus' name, God's going to give you an overhaul right now. Lord, I thank you for complete and total healing being released. Whoa. I, and I thank you for the hug of the Father. The hug of the Father being released over you right now. And I just speak over your body to be completely, totally healed. And I speak right now where the enemy tried to come in and sideswipe. Lord, I thank you that you are restoring now in Jesus' name. And there's a realignment in your neck, in your back. And Father, I thank you right now that anything right now, any depression that's trying to come against her is broken now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for supernatural strength being released over her right now in Jesus' name. Try moving your neck. How does that feel? It feels okay. Move it again. Thank you, Lord. Complete healing. Okay, so diagnosed with arthritis. That's what I'm picking up here because my hand is hot. So, Father, right now, we just thank you for healing off all arthritis. We just break its power right now in Jesus' name. Every word curse that came against her is broken now in Jesus' name. And we just release healing in this body. 
right now in Jesus' name. Whew. And Lord, just even to, I thank you, God, restore even some relationships, God, right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want you to try to move. How does that feel? It feels good. Come on. Praise God. What was that? It feels good. Come on. I have to be careful because you get in these, like, zones and, uh, it's easy just to stay. Um, yeah, God's going to move in some relationships too. Yeah. Yeah. There's some things, there's something turning right now. Hearts, like I just see things just shifting. Hard hearts becoming soft. Lord, just release it right now. I don't know if you're believing God for some people, but I just see right now. Does this make sense? Like, yeah. There's hard hearts becoming soft and maybe even used to come to church. Does this, yeah. And it, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's what I've been feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And so, Lord, we just thank you for the sun. Lord, we thank you, God, right now that you're softening his heart right now in Jesus' name, and you're calling him back. And I thank you for the tender mercies of the Lord. There's like a, like a, a wooing of the Lord with your son. And I thank you, for, Lord, that this next season... There's going to be a, even more of a reopening of that relationship to talk about the things of the Lord like never before. Lord, give him visions, give him dreams, and give him the right people around his life too. In Jesus' name. Oh, I can, man, it's strong. There's, there's a strong anointing. Hey. Thank you, Lord. I can. I'm going to pray for you. Ma'am, this right here, can you stand? The Lord wants to touch you too. Can I have your hand? Ooh, there it is. Thank you, Lord. There it is. There's like a weight coming off of you right now. Lord, I thank you that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. I feel like that's a scripture for you. In this. Have you been praying that? Yeah, you've been praying that, haven't you? I, I, feel like I'm, I feel like I'm in your prayer life. This is weird. It's weird for me. There's certain things you've been praying, like, like Lord, I just, you, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. There's a lightness that the Lord's releasing right now, and there's a strengthening coming. And I, and I just see things. Wow. Wow, that are just dropping off right now. Who God says he's got it all under control. He's got them in his hand, and it's the safest place. And Lord, I thank you right now. Lord, she's been standing in the gap, and angels are being released. Man. <laughs> oh, do you like to walk and pray? I see you walking and praying back and forth. Lord, I just see angels just coming and going. Lord, I thank you. Lord, that they, they go out at the word of the Lord. Lord, that this is going to be a year where there is angelic assistance being released for you right now. Whew. God wants you to know you're not alone. You're not alone. And you felt like you went through a season where you were alone. God says you're not alone. He's holding your hand and everything's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And Lord, I thank you that this is going to be a year of supernatural strength. The Bible says... The wicked flee where no man pursue, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. And that the Lord is going to use you. There's like a ferocity in your prayers. Whew. And you're going to take back everything that the enemies try to steal from you. Lord, we just release it now. Lord, we just thank you. It's all coming back in Jesus' name. <laughs> Touch her body, too, <laughs> from the top of her head all the way down to the soles of her feet. Thank you, Lord. <sighs> wow. Man. Just fill, 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 fill. <sighs> fill, fill. How are we doing? Are we okay? 
It's okay. There's, there's a strong, I like being here. It's so easy to minister. Uh, it's, guys, it's 4.30. I can, um, can I have five more minutes? Is that okay? We'll, we'll pray for more people. I know Bill Prankert's here. We're going to have, it's going to be a healing explosion. I'm going to pray for people for healing in a second. I, there's an unusual realm. I'm telling you right now, I can feel it in my hand. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. Hey, what's your name? Yeah, you. Alexa. <sighs> Leah. Lord, just release your glory over Alexa. Right now from the top of her head. I just see bubbles. Bubbles, Lord. <laughs> Does that make sense? Do people, like, call you? Like, I don't know if they've ever called. They call you bubbles? I literally heard that. Like, call her Bubbles. That's awesome. Lord, just bubble, bubble. Lord, I just thank you. Just release it right now in Jesus' name. Her face is on fire. That's awesome. I see, I see people around you that this is like so different for them and that God is about to use you as like a, I just like a converter. It's like they've got like a different end and it's like, it's like, they're, they're like they've never really fit in and God says you're gonna be a converter, you're gonna take people that have never fit in, that feel like on the outside and you have a testimony how Jesus pulled you in and I see you having a heart for those that are on the fringe and those that are like, they're out there and the Lord's gonna use you. You even have a heart too for like creative people, Lord. Just release it right now. There's like creativity and like, I don't know if they're like, I don't know, man, there's like art. Lord, release the arts in Jesus' name. Lord, right now in Jesus' name. Lord, just bring in the art, artistic people, Father, right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that all the people that are on the outside that have never fit, Lord, I thank you they're going to connect and they're just going to get rocked by the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. That's hilarious. Bubbles, come on. Lady in the, the back, very, very back. I think you have red, red hair. Yeah, is that your son? Yeah, come on. You're a good mom. God wants you to know that. You're a really good mom. And my word for you, Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. And I see the Lord bringing you into a season of like, Sometimes I feel like it's like a swirl, <laughs> but there's going to be peace in the midst of the swirl and that this is going to be such a year of the unusual blessing of the Lord being released over you right now. And the blessing of the Lord is going to overtake you this year. And God wants you to know that there's going to be so much more than what you can think or imagine. And it's not one thing or the other. It's going to be a season of both and. And it's not putting things on the back burner, but God is saying that as you're taking care of family, as you're doing all these things, God says there'll be more than enough released. So Lord, just release the more than enough. It's the God of not, it's not just enough. It's more than enough being released right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Here's what we're going to do, and then we're going to transition. If you need a miracle in your body, I want you to stand. You need a miracle in your body. We did this last night. There is like a rep. I'm telling you, it is in my hand. It feels like it's going to sound different. I can talk about it later, but it feels like a ball of anointing in my hand. And I know it's in this church and that there's going to be like healing revival in this church. And I see you guys have had these like these spurts of like move. Like it's like, and it's, I don't know if you guys have had extended meetings or anything, but I see it's been spurts like a week or two weeks, but God says there's something that's coming on the house in this next season of like habitation of like, on, like on a whole nother level. There's always been the presence and the glory, but there's another level that's coming into the church and the young people are about to come in and the influential people are coming in in this next season. It's your guys' heart. I see this church getting younger. I mean, get ready for the teenagers. Get ready. I mean, I mean like the 12 to 18 year olds are going to start coming in the church and God says the key to see families coming to the in the kingdom is the children that God's going to give you strategy to affect the children and if the children get affected they're going to be the evangelists for the rest of their family and that the Lord is going to use you guys even here there's there's kids I can see it 
there's kids that have literally come to Barry, Ontario with like, like, like they've been sent here. They have no, like they're here by themselves. That like God says, this is going to be a house for many that feel like, like they're not at home. They feel like, man, what am I going to do? This is going to be like a house for many young people. Get ready for the expansion of the youth and the young adults that are going to come in this place. Lord, we just release it now in Jesus name. So here's what we're going to do really quickly. If you need a miracle in your body, put your hand on the part of your body where you need a miracle. And if it's more than one thing, we did this yesterday, put your hand on your head. That means, Jesus, give me the overhaul. And so, Lord, we, Lord, we thank you. It's already here. The well's already here. If you, if you don't need prayer, just stretch out your hands towards someone that does. This is family ministry today. Lord, we just thank you. Right now, all over this room, Lord, we just thank you right now for your miracle working power that's being just right now, whoo, all over this room. I speak to bodies right now to be completely, totally healed. Lord, I thank you right now that every assignment of the enemy is broken now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we release right now healing from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. I speak right now all migraines, all all issues with the neck have to go now in Jesus' name. I speak to back issues now to go in Jesus' name. This is a weird word, a back ulcer. I, I don't know what this means, but I see like an ulcer, and it's more on the back side. Lord, heal it now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you. Right now, stomach issues being healed in Jesus' name. I don't know what it's called, but I see like a tear in the lining of a, the stomach. What, uh, what is that called? Lord, I thank you. Or hernia is being healed, right? If that's you, put your hand on, on your body where you have a hernia right now in Jesus' name. We release healing in Jesus' name. And we speak that the hernias have to go now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for chest conditions being healed right now. Breathing issues, asthma has to go now in Jesus' name. If that's you, start to breathe. <sighs> Just start to breathe. Lord, we thank you for healing Right now, in Jesus' name, like this is a funny one. Um, somebody here will issue with your note, like sm uh, smell. Right now, we just speak healing over the the the, the, the smeller. No, the nose. Right now, in Jesus' name, Lord, hips be healed. We command hips to come into alignment, knees to come into alignment now. In Jesus' name, if that's you with knee pain, start moving your knees. Look for your miracle this afternoon. Lord, we thank you for healing of the knees in Jesus' name. Healing of the feet. Lord, we thank you for healing. Start moving your feet. Lord, we release healing in feet in Jesus' name. All the, 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 the pain in the feet goes now. Ankles be healed now in Jesus' name. Shoulder, somebody's shoulder. Right now, you had like a rotator cuff injury. So I want you to start moving your shoulder right now in Jesus' name. We release healing in the shoulder. Hands be healed now in Jesus' name. doesn't matter if I called it or not. Lord, we just thank you right now for your healing being released from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. You're in the house. And Jesus, we thank you when you're in the house. Miracles happen. So here's what I want you to do really quickly. I want you to start to test your body. Look for your miracle right now. If you've had pain in your back, start moving your back. If you've had pain in your knees, start moving your knees. Move your feet. I'm not going to call people up right now. We can take testimonies maybe at a later time. But if God is doing something in your body and you feel something going on, I just want you to wave at me like this. Look at this. Come on. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Lord. It's all over this room. Come on. Lord, we thank you for miracles all over this room. Right now, Lord, just release it in Jesus' name. Man, I can feel it. There's miracles just taking place. Somebody in the back with your neck being healed now in Jesus' name. I don't know if that's you, ma'am. Is that you? In the, yeah, there's, a, there's a, like something with your disc is being healed now. Degenerative disc. Does that make sense? Like there's been some kind of compressed? Okay, right now, arthritis, go now in Jesus' name. We speak the healing right now in Jesus' name. I can just feel it. All of the pain goes now in Jesus' name. All of it goes. Start moving your neck. How does that feel? It feels good. Come on. Praise God. Somebody over here, this, this, oh, this is so weird. You're, you're something with your toe. Does someone have a, like, had a toe issue? Does that make sense? Is that you? Your toe? Right now, Lord, just release healing in Jesus' name. You as well. There's toe. Lord, we just thank you. Right now, all the pain in the toe goes now in Jesus' name. Lord, we just release it right now. Someone over here, you've got a, an issue with your knee. Where are you? Like right where, right, is that you in the back? Yes, sir. Just take it now. Start moving your knee. I thank you, Lord, for healing in Jesus' name. Come on. How does that feel? 
Lord, 100% healing in Jesus' name. We speak to the ligaments to be healed in Jesus' name and strength, not just in the knee. There's a whole overhaul over you, hips, back, the whole thing. Does that make sense? Yeah, Lord, just release it now in Jesus' name. Right now, there's somebody over here, your shoulder. Where are you? Shoulder in the back. Lord, we just thank you for healing right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we just speak healing in the shoulder. Now, I command all the pain to go in Jesus' name. We thank you for complete and total healing. Start moving that shoulder. How does that feel? Feels good. Come on, praise God. Where are you? You've had a pain in your throat. Does this make sense? It's been off and on. It's like a raw throat. Like, like, does that make sense? Where are you? Is that you? Okay. There's more than one thing the Lord wants to touch too, right? There's stomach. There's some other things that the Lord wants to just touch. There's an overhaul in your stomach. I don't know if it's like an, like an, like an acid thing, but I see the Lord just calming your stomach and everything there. Does this make sense? Yeah, Lord, just release healing right now from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Lord, we just release it. Whoa, there it goes. And, and even the stress is coming off of you right now. I just see it unwinding. Whew. God says more than enough. Don't worry about finances. Don't worry about anything in this season. I'm going to give you more than enough. Lord, we just release it now in Jesus' name. Man, I'm telling you, it's, it's strong. There's such an anointing. So where are you with the elbow? The, something with the, an, an elbow injury. Does that make sense? Is that you? There's been an elbow injury right now. Lord, I thank you for healing in Jesus' name. Healing in Jesus' name. Even to a strength in your body, sir. Right now, there's like just a recharge in the body. Right now, in Jesus' name, Lord, we just command it now from the top of his head to the soles of his feet and in his elbow. Right now, can you just start moving that elbow? How's that feel? Talk to me. It's getting better. Come on, that's good. Praise God. There's a straightening of your arm right now. Lord, we just command it to be straight. I see bones just coming into like alignment. And you couldn't fully open your arm. Yeah. Yeah. How does it feel now? Come on, it's a lot more loose. Praise God. Thank you for healing, complete healing in Jesus' name. Somebody here, you've got an issue, degenerative eye issue. Where are you? Your eyes, is that you, ma'am? And it's, you're losing more sight yeah, in your left eye? Just lift up your hands. What's your name? Nancy. Father, I just thank you for Nancy right now in Jesus' name. We just speak healing in the eyes in Jesus' name. And we thank you right now that complete and total healing right now in Jesus' name. I speak strength and, and healing in that eye, and we thank you for complete clarity now in Jesus' name. How does that feel? Still the same? It's okay. It's, hey, the Lord told me this years ago. If I, take, if I get offended, if people are being honest and they're like, no, I'm not healed, that means I'll take credit for when they do get healed. So I don't, to me, I, the only thing I care about is you receiving your miracle. So Lord, I thank you for Nancy right now. Come here, give me your hand. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, Lord, the eye be healed now in Jesus' name. Whoa, and even just restoration. There it is, there it is. There's like a restoration being released over you right now in Jesus' name. Anything like traumatic right now, whoa, right now it's being just healed in Jesus' name, that this is a new season for you right now. I see like a restart right now. Does this make sense? A restart right now. God's restoring right now. And all the trauma who goes in Jesus' name. Man, we can just keep moving in this. Um, this is the hardest part. The hard, honestly, the hardest part is that I want to pray for everybody. But the honest part is that we can only do the things that God calls us to do. And, and I, I want to, I, I just, okay. I'm going to transition. I know many of you, you need prayer. And I'm, I, we're here all week, and I'm going to be praying for people all week. And, and Bill's here tonight. He's going to be praying. We have a whole team praying. God's doing something. Whether you feel it or not, I want you to hold on to this right now because how many know prayer is powerful, amen? And it's not about me. It's not about me. It's about what God is doing. And I, and I just, I want to encourage you today. 
please, if you can't come tonight, I, I, I really believe that there's about to be an explosion of something. I, I can't tell you everything. I just know there's an explosion of what God wants to do. And how many know who Bill Prankert is? Bill Prankert is just a real father for Canada. And uh, Bill got touched in Catherine Coleman's meeting. And uh, he was never the same. And he's carrying that anointing. In this last season with Bill, and I've been with Bill for many years, but this last season in particular has been so powerful because the Lord spoke to him about releasing inheritance. And there's something about inheritance that God wants to release and bury. That this, this house is a storehouse of inheritance. And you guys are here. here scares the devil half to death here. man why don't we lift up our hands all over this place I'm going to transition I'm, I'm going to I just I feel like the shift is here if I'm not mistaken it, it's I think it's, it's, we're transitioning from Joshua chapter 4 into Joshua chapter 5, if I'm not mistaken, or Joshua chapter 5 into Joshua chapter 6, I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember my Bible exactly, but it talks about, if I'm not mistaken, in Joshua chapter 4, it talks about how God commanded the priests to carry the ark on their shoulders, and it talks about the protocol in which when they came to the Jordan, when their foot touched the waters, the waters parted. And then it goes into Joshua chapter 5. If I'm not mistaken, it says this. When the kings of the other nation heard of what God did with Israel, it says that their hearts melted like wax and there was no strength left within them. And I felt like the Lord is saying something right now over Barry, over this region. The devil has thrown everything at you and the kitchen sink but you're still standing. And I got a word for you. Just because you feel like you're knocked down doesn't mean you're knocked out. And I feel this right now that the devil is terrified because he's thrown everything he can at you and you're still in the ring and you haven't given up and there's another round to this thing and I'm telling you, your enemy's hearts are melting like wax and there is no strength left anymore. And here's my word for this house, for many of you. It's going to be like what David said. I searched for my enemy, and I could not find him. I believe from today, something happened today. Lord, I thank you that you are delivering us from enemies that we feel have, that have been too strong for us. And Lord, I thank you right now. In Barrie, Ontario, the heart of a generation is about to get an answer to their prayer. That God, you're raising up fathers and mothers. Lord, even in this house, God, you're raising up an anointing for fathers and mothers to raise up a generation that feels like they're fatherless and motherless. God, I thank you for that anointing, God, that's going to tear down things, that tear down and rebuild things beyond what we can think or imagine in Jesus' name. And Lord, I ask today all over this room, Lord, that we would have such a heart such a generational heart, just like you, God. Jesus, and how you modeled it, you said, if you see me, you've seen the Father. Lord, let that be our mission statement. God, if they've seen us, they've seen the Father. Lord, I ask that that revelation, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would be released over this house. Lord, over every person that is here, that, Lord, that this would be the beginning of a generational family revival. Lord, release it here. If it's going to happen somewhere, God, let it happen here in this church. God, I'm asking. Lord, let it happen right here in this city, God, in Barrie, Ontario. God, right here, let there be a family move like we've never seen before. And just like Elijah, and, and we know, we know that we know that we know, God, we know that even Elijah the prophet passed the test because you said in Malachi chapter 4, you said that you would send the spirit of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons and the sons to the fathers. 
Lord, that this prophetic generation would carry the heart of a father and the heart of a mother to turn the hearts of fathers to their sons and sons to their fathers and mothers to their daughters and daughters to their mothers. Lord, and that there would be a move of family like we have never seen before in Jesus' name. Come on, can we give him praise this afternoon? Jesus! Thank you, Lord. Well, it's 4.42. (laughs) God's good. So here's what we're going to do. We want to release you in the blessing of the Lord. And we're going to be back here tonight, 7 o'clock. Bill Prankert is with us. And so thank you so much for taking the time and being here this afternoon. God bless, and we will see you tonight.